If you're about to upgrade your fork or shock to another Fox or RockShox, I think this video is important for you. Because there are alternatives, and this is an excellent alternative. This isn't a sales pitch video for some tour components or anything. I'm just genuinely interested in something that's rather new on the market, that definitely can compete with the other two players. And for us consumers, competition is a good thing. This little story started when I was about to do a quick test of the new Canon Del Motera this spring. I did a review of the old Motera a few years back, and even if that bike felt alright, this new bike was something else. In the end, I never published the video since the bike was modified. It was turned into a mullet to start with, and the 160mm fork was replaced with the 170mm Suntour fork. I've read about Suntour's new grey line of forks, and the feel from the Cannondale sparked my interest. It so happens that the bike belongs to this man, who is the general agent in Sweden for Suntour suspension components. A few weeks back, he also reached second place in the final race of the Swedish Enduro Cup on another Motera with some tour components, of course. I just got to pay him a visit. I'm uh, David Petson Dragonis from uh, West Coast Bikes. And uh, we are the um, Santur service center and distributor in Sweden. Could you please take us through the range of the Santur forks? I don't know anything really about the forks apart from the Duralox fork and I've got uh, the old XCM, Santur XCM fork on one of my old bikes. Yeah. So what's the difference here between these new forks and the old ones? Yeah, well Santur is the, the largest producer of bicycle forks and shocks in the world. Yeah. By a large amount, uh, about 80% uh, of the market. Mm -hmm. And the vast uh, volume is, of course, the entry-level uh, products mm -hmm. that, that you see on almost every bike on the street. Right. Now, the last, the last 10 years, say, uh, Santor has started to produce more high-end uh, products as well. Yeah. And especially now, the, the last two, three years, starting to uh, really gain momentum and uh, yeah. be um, seen on a, lo a lot of fast riders out there. Yeah, I've seen those grey forks everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, both in the, um, I think uh, even in, in the downhill World Cup. Yeah, yeah that has become uh, one of the, say, uh, one of the things that you recognize Santur yeah. on by, by the, the, the grey color. Yes. So it's both on the Exxon 34 fork that uh, Tom Pidcock, for example, has uh, won World Cups and uh, right. Olympic mm -hmm. uh, with. And it's on the Rux uh, downhill fork mm -hmm. uh, that you also see on the World Cup. And also, of course, uh, now it's been seen a lot on the Duralux 36 and Duralux 38 uh, forks. Yeah. Could you take us through the grey fork then, the Enduro forks, I guess the, that is? Yeah, that is the Duralux 38. Yeah. You get the black coating, uh, SKF seals, mm. uh, and a really high quality damper with both. Uh, High speed and low speed. Are there compression. different versions of these? There are two different versions, but they're only a slight, slight difference okay. uh, in, in, into the damper. It's actually quite small difference. So okay. if you have a Duralux 38, it's a high end, uh, yeah. uh, good okay. working fork compared right. to the top models of the other brands. Right. And then there's uh, Fox, no, not Fox, <laughs> Santur. 36 as well, right? Yeah. The Duralux 36 as well. Yeah. Mm. So the 36 is for trail riding and um, for, uh, uh, let's say, a little bit lower weight bikes. It goes between, I think, 130 to 160 millimeter of stroke. Okay. And um, the Duralux 38 is more for the for the heavier e-bikes yeah, and okay. also for mm -hmm. enduro riding. Right. Uh, and there, the travel is uh, from uh, 140 to 180. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. 290. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Ooh. So I was thinking about the equivalent from Fox and RockShox. Yeah. Is that? Um, uh, I guess Fox 38. 
might be the equivalent. Yeah, for this. yeah. Fox uh, 38 Factory yeah. and uh, and uh, Rockshock Seb Ultimate is uh, yeah. is the force that you should compare with the Dulux 38. Oh, okay, so it's on that yeah. high level. Yeah, 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 yeah it is. Okay. Uh, so it is uh, a really high high level. Uh, piece of equipment yeah. but to a uh, much lower price than uh, than the competition yeah. you told me at another point that uh, the price for these forks are lower than fox and even rock shocks maybe yeah yeah so by how much approximately 20%? it's it's actually more if you if you compare them to the to the um, yeah for the ultimate and factory yeah. uh, levels maybe um, those have some small things that can uh, can uh, contribute for a little bit higher price. Yeah. But this is actually 30 to 40 percent cheaper. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's a, a big difference. Yeah. In price. Then you compare to the Fox Factory and yeah. the Seb Ultimate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's a, that's a difference. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to the other forks. Uh, you mentioned that fork earlier. Yep, uh, which was really interesting. Uh, I've actually tested that one on a bike with ABS system. Yeah, could exactly. you take us through that, please? Yeah, this is the new 35 millimeter platform and uh, made mostly for uh, for e-bikes and um, uh, yeah, for for uh, heavier equipped bikes, let's yeah. say. Uh, and um, Santor is one of the first, or maybe no, it's even the first company. Uh, doing suspension forks that made a collaboration with uh, Bosch and uh, Magura for the ABS system. So uh, this one is compatible with uh, the new ABS. Yeah. And a really, really good fork for a uh, uh, short, short travel EMTB mm. or um, a cargo cargo bike application. Yeah. And okay. Yeah, stiff 35 and yeah, good working <laughs> fork. Of course, a little bit less uh, adjustment for, uh, than the Duralux, but uh, yeah. a really good fork for that for mm -hmm. that ap application. Yeah. And then I guess we come to the cross-country fork. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here I would like to show the Accent 34 works that's yeah, okay. uh, been uh, seen as uh, a mention for uh, Tom Pidcock and other top riders. Yeah. Uh, Winning, but uh, I didn't have that that here for today. No. So, so this is the the Accent 32. Yep. Uh, so it's just uh, slightly lower in uh, in spec and okay. uh, slightly cheaper, but still a very very good cross country fork. Yep. Um, with um, uh, from 100 to 120 millimeter in travel. Yeah. And uh, low weight, and also there uh, big price difference from. From competition. Yeah, and uh, is that for the lockout? Yes, yeah, okay. that's for the lockout. Yeah, okay. Okay, to the dampers then, or the shocks, yes. sorry. Yes, yeah. the rear shocks. The rear shocks. Um, uh, here on this bike, the um, Enduro e-bike, we have the uh, trier shock that's uh, fitting for a little bit more long travel um, bikes. It's, uh, yeah, if you, we talked before, uh, about the competition, so here is, well, say say uh, Rockstar Super Deluxe uh, yes. comparison, yeah. and uh, it's a, a tri air, so that stands for three uh, types of compression adjustment. So mm. from uh, from uh, soft to to quite uh, stiff. Mm. So and also with the rebound adjustments. Yep. Good, good working uh, shock. That's good price point and a good performance. That's the. Um, the the goal with with Santur is that to have uh, performance, price, and serviceability. So okay. they uh, are also really easy to maintain and service. Yeah, that's important because yeah. that's a huge cost really in the long run for yeah. owning a bike. Yeah, exactly. So they are designed from the from the ground up to be uh, easy, easily serviceable and, and low low uh, service cost. Mm. So that's also a good point. Yeah. And so that was Trier for Enduro and trail riding. Yep. This is the Edge Plus. So there's Edge and Edge Plus um, that's uh, made for uh, cross-country racing. Okay. Uh, so the Edge Plus has a little bit bigger air volume. Uh -huh. uh, so a little bit more um, uh, adjustment uh, in the air chambers. Mm. 
but uh, and and they are in several different uh, with 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 or without remote and uh, three different or just uh, on and off uh, lockout okay. uh, versions. Yeah. One question: Why isn't that grey when that is grey? Yeah, that's a good good question. <laughs> it's uh, something I think maybe something that uh, Santur thinks that uh, four could could stand out yeah. color-wise. Okay. But uh, well, that should melt in and blend in yeah, with, the, yeah. with the frame a little yeah. bit more. Yes, yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. I know that David speaks for his course, but after having ridden a few Duralux forks, I don't know if I could tell the Santur fork apart from a Fox Factory or a Seb Ultimate in a blind test. The Relux really is that good. Will we see some tour parks on high-end mountain bike brands in the future? I think that RockShox in particular, with its very own complete ecosystem, could be hard to beat. And riding a Fox Fork and Shock gives you bragging rights that is difficult for some tour to beat. Anyway, a lower price point is always welcome in these days of inflation and interest rate hikes. But serviceability and low service costs are important factors to consider too. So, if you're about to upgrade, I think you should add Santur to your shortlist. Keep an eye out for my review of this fully autonomous drone from the future. That video will be out shortly.